Hello, viewers. I'm SB. And I'm Amabel. And welcome back to, I think, almost exactly the position that we started last episode in. <laughs> but I swear, we've done a bunch of stuff. It just, you know, it just happened to end up back here. Um, so we learned a lot last episode. We learned a lot about the nature of the murder. We learned a fair amount about the nature of our character's sort of um, history with his force, at least. Like, mm -hmm. sort of. We didn't really learn very much about our history as a cop. We learned a lot about how people view us. Yeah. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. And I guess this is where we're going today. Just go, yeah, we're, go ahead and drive on. We're going to do something with the radio. I remember that. There, there are I other remember. people to, to talk to, certainly. Yeah. Alternatively, you could just steal Kim's car and take off into the night. It, I don't see that option. Yeah, no, I think he has the keys. Okay, pick up the radio again. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Ah, okay, yeah, we were going to run on, on these two things here. Yeah. I need you to connect me to a civilian, a Sylvie. She may have reported a murder. Of course. What is her number, officer? Change of plans. Her number. Mm -hmm. No. No. I don't like that second option at all. <laughs> Electrochemistry, calm down. <laughs> That's inappropriate. Electrochemistry is like, ooh, hold on. Wiener plans? Kim didn't Gardy guard Kim didn't guard give you Sylvie's number. Yes, hold on. Her number is 0051944298. That's very good. Oof. This uh, this yeah, is a very okay. a very characterful decision here. Yeah, I'm gonna start slapping a marching rhythm on my thighs. Give it a minute. She might be busy at the moment. It takes a bit to get to the phone. What what does the rhythm sound like? Um. Gosh, that's a good question. Um. Here's the thing. I don't have much rhythm myself, so it's hard. It's hard for me to. Okay, fair to enough. Think fair of enough. a thing. You're the musical one. Yeah, that's a word for it. I don't think I've known a single day in our time together when you haven't sung something, or danced, or both. Yeah, that sung is a word for it, I guess. Officer, I have Sylvie Malaika on the line for you. Yes. Hello. A female voice greets you through static. It sounds like she's a million miles away from here. Hello, this is the police calling. I have some questions for you about your last days at work. I'm going to go with that one because I don't... I feel like probably I did not comport myself very well. <laughs> Based on the way everybody else has reacted to us. <laughs> All right. Hello, officer. What can I do for you? Oh, damn, she recognized you. <laughs> there is no resentment in her tone. She wants you to ask her out. No question about it. What's uh, no. what's going on with electrochemistry all of a sudden today? This is... I, this, this is not appropriate. <laughs> um... You quit your job at the Whirling. Why? You mean, why did I leave the bar? Honestly, I'm not really comfortable discussing it with you, sir. Mm. Oh. I don't know if I want to... You know, I, 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 I will push slightly for, for information. Um, wait, why aren't you comfortable discussing it with me? 
Let's just say I left because I needed to get away from someone. All right, I won't push you on this. Are you ever coming back to work? Because, I don't know, well, on the other hand, because uh, Electric Chemistry says there's no resentment in her tone. Yeah. I, I, maybe Electric Chemistry is right about that. I, I don't think Electric Chemistry is right about the second thing. That, that seems like a bad, bad read. Um, so probably I'm not the person she's trying to get away from. But, but she seems Maybe, so, and if I, she's if she's been run off by somebody, it could be useful information. Okay, I'll go with the first one then. But I, I this is another time when I wish I had like a, a a more nuanced response, and I appreciate that the the game does not give that to me. It's like ah, get away from whom? You know who. You think you hear a sliver of accusation in her words. Mm. Don't be paranoid. She's obviously talking about someone else, not you. Uh, okay, so notice that this is a failure of volition, and to succeed would have required a very, very high level. Ah... Uh. I All right. think that probably tells you what it is right there. I won't push you on this. Are you ever coming back to work? Maybe. I don't know. I just know I have to take some time off right now. <sighs> Was it you who called the police? No. Not me. Do you know who made the call? I'm not going to... I'm not going to... The first option seems kind of accusatory. Well, and, it is sort I mean, of accusatory, yeah. but I, I think maybe for good reason. <laughs> Do you know who made that call? No, sorry. I don't. <clears throat> Not a lot of people have phones around here. Copper thieves take the wires. People don't have the money to have the cables put in again. They use the union's phone, or the one on the coast. It was someone else. We'll find them sooner or later, officer. It just might take a while. Okay, next question. Yeah, go on. Have have you seen my badge? Yes, I know who you are. You're a police officer. The law. No, my, my badge is missing. Have you seen it anywhere? Oh, no. I haven't, sorry. See, now I'm worried about asking her if she's seen my gun. It comes across as a threat. I... Or an innuendo. <laughs> oh, this is this is rancid. I don't like either of uh, either implication. I wish I had. Okay, I'm just gonna. I can't make this person hate me more than she already does. <laughs> so I guess that's a way to look at it. Have you seen my gun? Please, no, not this again. Everyone saw your cool gun, detective. Oh. Oh. She sounds beyond exacerbated. I showed you my gun. When did it happen? You were trying to impress some people with it. Everyone was eating, and... She stops hesitantly, not sure if she should continue. This is really uncomfortable. Ha having behavior I have no memory of described to me is... is... Ugh. Sounds like it's going to be bad. Do you really want to know? And what? What did I do? You were waving it around in everyone's face, begging them to describe it. You said it calms you, and then you started making suicide jokes. It, it got pretty graphic. Oof. Oof. People tried to back away from you, or even slip out of the door. But you screamed. I am the goddamned law, and you have to listen to me. You are all suspects in a murder investigation. Oh, boy. Ah. <laughs> uh, so I am, like, literally uncomfortable in my seat right now. This is, this is a really, like you were just noting, I think this is a really clever trick for um, inducing a sort of, uh, a sort of embarrassment. Like, 
having this kind of behavior attributed to you, and at this point in the story, you know enough about who this character is that it's very easy to believe. <laughs> it's very easy to believe this happened. And even though you were not uh, present, obviously you had no agency here, it still feels it still feels to me like it's my fault. Is, is, are you getting that same kind of like... Yeah. Yeah, this is brutal. Yeah, so I'm... I, I'm kind of drawn actually to the first answer just to see what the the character interaction is. At the same time, that feels like the kind that feels like a particular kind of way that people are manipulative of other people in their emotions. Oh, it's, it's yeah, yeah. It definitely feels coercive. Like you're trying yeah. to get you to talk her. You're trying to get her to talk you back out of it. So maybe I won't say that because I, I. But I, I do like listen. I love that you're developing character instincts. <laughs> oh, that's happened eventually. Ah. Hmm. Uh, uh, okay, I don't know what. This to scene say. is this scene is fucking grim. Me neither. Ah. <laughs> uh. You know, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna click it. Ooh, all right, spicy. Uh, I, sh I should have killed myself. Oh. This isn't gonna get you demonetized, is it? <laughs> I don't know. If it is, we're already over the threshold. <laughs> no, please, no more suicide threats. Thank God you don't have that stupid gun anymore. Oh. There are way more inventive ways than a gun to leave this world. That's okay. Thanks, that's, thanks, conceptualization. That's but so she knows you don't have your gun. Yes, but what happened to my gun? No idea. All I know is next you were waving around money instead, saying things like big bucks cannot lie and guns can't buy money, but money can always buy guns. Okay, it almost looked like you pawned it. Believe me, I did not ask. I think I got everything I need, thanks. I'm not asking her on a date. That's <laughs> yeah, really... no, especially after the thing that just happened. I think that would be a very bad idea. I do hope so. Please, don't call me again. Bye. She's ready to hang up. And you can take a second here and sort of dig around in your head and... Wait, why does she seem angry with you? No, she doesn't have a problem with you. It must be someone else she's angry about. Some other guy. Like God. Uh, okay, but I am a guy. Sure it isn't about me? Trust me, you wouldn't want to be the guy here. You know how it is. Yak, yak, nag, nag. <sighs> empathy, empathy, you're being real gross. No, you're the guy. Your Lieutenant Love, matchmaker extraordinaire. Help the poor girl out, lest she turns into a spinster. Oh wow! This this is a, like as a fail, a, an explicit mechanical failure of empathy. <laughs> this is fantastic. Okay, it's horrifying. I'm happy, <laughs> I'm happy to help, but maybe I could do so without all this internalized misogyny. That's, I. I, I'm trying to play a character who who is, again, like horrified to find out this is who he was. Yeah. Does he does he have so. the level of self awareness to? I mean, they're giving me this option. I'm gonna go with. <laughs> okay. What misogyny? I'm just telling things the way they are. Can't a man be honest in his own head anymore? <laughs> Jesus. You have to act, Lieutenant Love. You have to calm that hysteric down. Tell it you've got everything under control. Then go and have a little boy's talk with God himself. Think you can do that, Lieutenant Love? <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, I'm... So, I do think that, like... <clears throat> we're role-playing yeah. through a failure of empathy here. Yeah. 
And it does feel like can't I do it without all that internalized misogyny is like an escape hatch. Mm -hmm. Right where it kind of feels like you're not really doing the thing. But it's like, I don't know. I, I want to talk about this for a second if you if you okay. don't mind. Like, yeah, no, it's fine. The game is engaging with some some complicated issues here. Some some things that are maybe going to be a little bit of a uh, of a third rail for some people. Like the the misogyny obviously is it's real gross, um, and so like. I think to stay true to the premise, to like really stick to, you tried to have empathy for this woman and you failed. I feel like they would have to make it so that you, you kind of like the escape hatch, the option three doesn't exist. Right. But is that too unfair to the player who also is a person who has to live in the world? Yeah. Yeah. I definitely think, See, there are a lot of times in which I'm I'm not given an option out and I'm given options that I don't agree with and I have to kind of pick one. Mm -hmm. And but it's never a thing where like I am previously where I have to like actively engage in in like really both these first two responses are really awful in in, in slightly different ways. And you know, I if I'm playing the game, I want some choice, right? As to how I'm playing the game, as how the character is going, mm -hmm. and being forced to be complicit. Excuse me. Um, like I understand why the escape hatch is here. I guess is what I'm saying because you don't want to force complicity, and then. Oh, why are you doing this bad thing? Feel bad about this bad thing that we're forcing you to do. Like this is something I actually come across, you know, because I, I design board games that often have to deal with complicity, particularly like in systemic things, uh, systemic oppression and whatnot. And like, I, you, you have. To, someone has to be willingly complicit you you can't force them to like okay because you failed this check you're you're going to be real gross like in this way i, I feel like you can you absolutely can and hell there are there are definitely games that do even without a failed check you know um like very famously um a number of military games make oh, you yeah. a party to some kind of atrocity in exactly the way you're talking about where it's like, it's sort of like they heap the blame for you on this thing. And then they're like, you know, what's, uh, how could you do such an awful thing? Yeah. I mean, it, it's, um, the, 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 the no Russian thing. Yeah. Or, or, yeah. um, you know, spec ops, the line, um, has some of this stuff in it very famously. Yeah. I mean, there's really my primary problem with, uh, Brenda Romero's train, Yes, yeah. Is 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 that um you know, it's all the rug pull. It's all the oh, you've done this bad thing. Why did you do this bad thing? Now feel bad about it. And I Yeah. So like I, yeah, it, to some extent if there isn't an escape hatch, is there like um you can risk a real invalidation of the message. Where yeah. you've, you've alienated the player in a very different sort of way than the way that you usually try to alienate the player. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've, this this is something I actually I think about so very much in my work because my work is often so explicitly of, about, like, oppressive systems and whatnot. Um, yeah, is, it, is it something like the, you have to... If you're going to get the player to engage with something like this and to potentially accept the blame for something like this, like they have to have some buy-in. Yes, exactly. You know, you have to know like ahead of time is what you're doing. Like, uh, you know, Cole Worley just released the, 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 the second edition of, of his board game, John company, which is about work for the East India company. Yeah. Um, and in the rule book, he's like, Hey, you're, playing people working within this company that did this imperialism and like had this this terrible human suffering and in, in, in inflicted and 
you have to make sure everyone consents to that before you start playing the game. And so you have to buy in in order to engage with it or play the game, right? Um, and it's a different thing than, you know, than like the rug pull. Yeah, absolutely. You know? So, and I appreciate, so I appreciate here that they have these options without giving us a rug pull. Like there is a way to refuse the love quest, although it's wonderful. And, and I will say this, mm -hmm. I don't think I was given this option. I do not remember a love quest. So I literally, I cannot tell you at all what awaits here. Um, this is this is all up to you, darling. Oof. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to I think, I think like, here. like two is off the table, right? Option two is two. off the table. Yeah. Option, option number two makes me wretch a little bit just thinking about it. Um, but you know, there's a, there's a sort of a paternalistic misogynist version of one that you can imagine somebody telling themselves comes from a good place. Yeah. And to what degree do you want to like role play a character who is wrestling with that versus a character who is self-aware enough to just be like, please, no, I don't, please, I don't want to do this. Yeah. You know, I, I think... And also, you know, interfacing with your own comfort level, obviously, and everything. Yeah, I, this is probably cowardly of me, but I'm going to go with the third one. And, I think that's fine. No, there's no cowardly. Is, that's fine. You know, I, I'd really be interested to think to to because I assume <laughs> that that men have also played this game. So I'd be interested how how people who who are men react to this this quest and like and like and like to this. Um, this failure of empathy, like the game does a lot with like kind of toxic strains of masculinity, right? And and the character coming coming from that, and so yeah, I think you know my relationship to masculinity is 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 not the same as as a cis woman's, but it's not the same as a man's either, you know. So it's uh, I have a very yeah, it's a complicated boy. That's a complicated situation. Yeah, uh, but please no. I don't want to say any of those things. Refuse the love quest, although it's wonderful. So I would like to say... What? You want to be more empathetic? Damn, empathy. I, I do want to say, like, if you are a man watching this video right now, uh, please do, like, I would. we would love to hear what you think. We won't read the comments right away, because, um, you know, there's a lot of spoilers and stuff. That, that not that we're accusing anyone of, of spoiling anything, but you know, for reasons, we're not reading the comments right away on this series, but I would like to come back and read these comments. So please, you know, yeah, I, I only read the comments once I wasn't supposed to. And, but that was because someone told me about a comment and I had replied to it. Okay. okay. That's, that is different. All right. Um, I don't like, uh, is it is weird what what slurs they will they will bleep and what ones they won't yeah like they're they're uh, in world racial slurs right there's mm -hmm. a, there's at least one word that we've seen so far that just has to be a racial slur um but yeah that doesn't that doesn't get bleeped but i do think that there's i think there's a lot of interesting things to say about the way they choose to engage with these topics that maybe are some of which are better saved for like after we've seen more of it. Yeah. Damn. Okay, just crack open a cold one in the middle of the recording. We're all professionals I'm here. Little, I'm a little parched. Nothing's wrong. It's just sexuality. That's a very high level electrochemistry success there. Ah. Uh. Was dominated by the other party. Okay. Anything else, officer? <laughs> she hung up while you were considering it. Yeah. Could you run a serial number from a pair of armored boots for me? Sir, officer, what's the number? And the make of the armor, if you know it. E50.100.1000. The make and model of the armor is Fairweather T500 slash VE. Got it. I'll contact the ICP database immediately. Call back tomorrow. Hopefully they'll have dug up something useful by then. Okay. Was there anything else? 
I'm done with the radio for now. 57, over and out. I love that you said to her, I'm done with the radio for now. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers, a radio on a hook, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater you can, Yeah, you can go ahead and cut him. You don't have to wait for him to say that every time. Okay. So, let's check out my book. We ran the number on the, uh, on the armor. Uh, we... Yeah, we really don't know anything about the badge. We know that you pawned your gun and it's not there anymore. That's really okay. fucking bad. Um, so we have a field autopsy to do and we have the interview. Yeah, you did you did get your gloves, so should we do the auto so how how are we doing on time? I feel like we either are gonna do the field autopsy or, or go try to punch a guy. <laughs> I mean, you know where my sympathies are. Yeah, what's that? No, you know. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, you know. I'm refusing to play your little game here. Okay. I, I, I got better. Um, yeah, okay, let's... let's uh, how do I... There we go. You know yeah, what? you can just click on the, the tab you have open. And it'll close the thing. Wait, I know what I was going to do. Okay. I was going to look at the sunglasses. Oh, that's that's true. This is not the way. Okay. Down the road, down the road. Is it is it here? Yeah. These sunglasses? I don't remember Shine which box. On these sunglasses yeah. last a lifetime, officer. 100% guarantee. It's a tough check, but you're very good at conceptualization. No luck. All you find is this lime-colored cellophane visor produced by a bargain sportswear brand called Amphibian, apparently. There's a malformed green frog on its bent cap. Oh, that visor is perfect for you, officer. It'll definitely keep the sun out of your eyes while you're shooting criminals. Bang, bang! And all for a mere six real. I put the visor back. You don't like it? Sure, Square Joe. No problem. Let's get you some real shades. All right, next time you gain a point of conceptualization, you can try again. Can, can I do that? I'm... Well, you're... I'm maxed out. You're maxed out. I don't really like sunglasses anyway. Do you like sunglasses, sweetheart? Um, well, I do hate the sun. <clears throat> yeah. So I probably should have some, but I don't. I don't have any particularly strong feelings about sunglasses themselves. Like as a class of object. Mm. Alright, so we're going to try this. Um, but what happens if I die? That's a great question. Like, does it reload a save? Like, how often did you die when you play? Yeah, hard to say. Guess we'll find out. Your race descent has only worsened since I last saw you. You have really let yourself go. Volition says do it again. A volition and physical instrument have united to form the perfect team. You can do this. Okay, I'm gonna ask about tattoos again. The racists are generally not very good examples of their race. Why are you asking about his tattoos? You know about his tattoos. I forgot about his tattoos. Okay. <laughs> I am not like them. I am craniometric perfection. I have taken true. That is a noble cranium, but you got a hard noggin yourself. Your silence betrays your inferiority. You do not right. have a reply. You should enter a deep. Do it now while he's talking. Deeper. Perhaps in 4,000 years, there is need for a servile homunculus. See, I told you that was the secret. Just like that, instinct took over. 
A solid strike straight into his throat, into the cartilage. You could swear you felt the soft palate break. That was a six too. You're kicking a, you're kicking ass on bad rolls. Kim is ready to draw. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> yeah, he's like, it's like ah oh, shit, Man this again. Really gasping for air. Time stands still around you. In the distance, the sounds of the harbor are falling silent. He's open. Rip into him. Right hook. Escalate it. Get intimate with him. Bring the hurt closer. Okay. It's all you. So, Listen, I don't. I didn't do this. I can't. Half Half Light is suggesting we're doing the right hook, but a 360 flying spin kick is pretty. Uh, it would be pretty sick. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna tell you I not to do that. Up. But what if this screws it up? This, I mean. This, this, that will probably also be funny. <laughs> the thing is, how often has Half Life been right about things? Um, I don't know. Half Life's usually just like, ah, I'm afraid, and that's he's not wrong about being afraid. But I, I, I would question how useful that is. All right, I'm gonna back up and perform a 360 degree flying spin kick. This seems like a very dramatic and sensible way to approach this situation. <laughs> lands with a dull thump, like a broken down puppet of muscles and sinew. For a moment, he still tries to keep his head up, dazed eyes looking at you with unimaginable surprise. To your left is the button. Ah. Uh, see, I'm worried when I press the button that someone I don't know will die and it'll be someone I actually know. Okay, this I, I'm pretty sure it's not that button. Uh, I will say Disco Inferno. As you slam your fist on the button, the man collapses entirely, his head rolling to the side. Looks like you're the new measure head now. <laughs> no thanks. No one is the new measure head. Let's go before he gets up. Uh, and then I'm going like this way. The man is still. Not... It'll take a few moments for him to recover. What's in that box? Take his shit. Kim, get out of the way. Hell yeah. <laughs> this is our money. We earned it through violence. Okay, where, where am I? Press the button for the interactables. Where is the... Okay. Okay, there's nothing else to interact with here. Go the, go the other way. Oh, that button opened that. Okay. Got it. Congratulations. A new environment. It's been a while. You solved a problem with violence. Every worker equals member of the board is written at the top of these flyers. And at the bottom, the union logo and demand democracy. This is a Dewey typewriter. The model name is on the back. A standard office file cabinet. The drawers seem to be locked. Book, La Frumée, volume one, number four. The leading intellectual organ, organ of Martinez communism offers a radical Mazovian perspective on a range of contemporary issues. This cover uh, features a stylized portrait of the late King Frissel with a pair of white antlers growing out of his head. Uh, Lieutenant Kitsura Kitsuragi snapped this photo of the hanged man's tattoos. It displays the inter intricate web of blue lines stretching across his torso. You have to admit, it looks quite cool. So there's a big red interact button. An intricate web of blue lines oh. stretches across the torso of the hangman. Well, you clicked. From the right shoulder to the solar plexus. 
Each time the lines intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. It still kind of looks like a map of the stars in the night sky, but something's not right. Who are you is a very interesting question. Gone. What's the meaning of this tattoo? For you to discover. You've gotten as far as you will without assistance. The front of this quarterly journal features a large satirical portrait of the late King Frieza. From the sides of his head, a pair of white antlers spread to the corners of the cover. Okay, why antlers? Because white antlers are one of the symbols of communism. They represent a society in accord with the natural world and at the same time above it. A shameful way to treat a former king. Even one as underwhelming as this cell. No endurance. We're not manarchists here. We're not, we're not monarchists here. It's very interesting that that's an endurance success, though, huh? Yeah. Why Frizzle? Because Frizzle was incompetent, foolish, and cruel. In short, the embodiment of everything the communards wished to overthrow. It's satire, you see. Mm, okay. I'll flip through the page to see what catches my eye. To your disappointment, there aren't any full-color pictures to direct your attention. <laughs> Just column after column of closely set text, interrupted occasionally by little doodles in black and white. That's a sick burn. <laughs> after rifling the pages with your thumb several times, you return to the table of contents. The magazine is divided into several sections. International development, Kunst und Kultur, and local concerns. Just inside the cover, there's also an editor's note. Read the editor's note. Comrade, as you know, this journal takes its name from Mazov's immortal expression, Du Cristal a la Fume. This was his way of describing the way the rigid, crystalline structures of capitalist ideology turn to smoke under communism. Mm. But like the structures of capitalist ideology, we too are at risk of going a la fume. Unlike many publications which are content to spoon feed their readers reassuring drivel, la fume is committed to telling the radical truth, even when that truth may drive away potential subscribers. So please, if you value our radical Mazovian perspective on contemporary politics, culture, and international affairs, please consider subscribing today. Yours in struggle, the editors. <laughs> These options are so adorable. Like, you've identified this magazine as contraband in a very, like, 11-year-old boy kind of way. Yeah, you know, that's a, that's not... That's not what I, I'm, I'm going to go with this one. Kim, I think this is a communist magazine. What do you expect? It was laying around the office of the Debarders Union. They're probably bankrolling this thing. I don't think he heard my sarcasm. I don't think you said you it was sarcasm. The front of the magazine, the table of contents unfolds before you. I think you, Amabel, said it with sarcasm. I don't believe the character did. What is kunst and culture? It takes a moment, but gradually it dawns on you that kunst und Kultur must mean arts and culture. As you leaf through this section, you come across several reviews of recent radio plays, as well as a brief artist spotlight featuring a local artist identified only as CS. Radio play? That's neat. That's a neat detail. I really, I really like the idea of a world where radio plays are still a thing. <laughs> the main feature, though, is a long essay titled Tip Top Tourne, A Critical Mazovian Perspective. Just a moment. What is this Tip Top Tourne? 
The actual article is surprisingly light on details, but after skimming a page or two, you gather that it has something to do with motor carriage racing. If you don't follow it, you only ever hear about the ludicrous sponsorships and obscene death toll. All right, let's see what these communists have to say about Tip Top. You think you're settling in for a relaxing recap of the most recent season, maybe sprinkled with some nice anecdotes about a few of the more colorful drivers. Instead, you find yourself skimming a 10,000 word feature about all the politically problematic aspects of Tip Top Tourney. Wait, what's wrong with Tip Top? Where to even start? For one, there's the crass commercialism of its sponsorships. And then there's the practically criminal emphasis on deadly motor crashes. See, I don't... <sighs> You know what? Okay, I, I like this. I like this because it's the idea of this person just coming across these ideas. Because here, yeah. here's the thing, is that um, the reason why you, you need to, like, create, like, class consciousness and, and like, move the Overton window on, on things is a lot of ideas that, that should make sense. Like, yeah, this is terrible. Um, we're... The cultural messaging is such that that we distrust that thing, and, and we, we, we've come to expect well, sponsorships are fine, a motor crash is fine. You know what? What was so bad about uh, the football men having the head injuries? You know, without actually thinking about it. So I like that this is his reflexive reaction to this. Is mm -hmm. like, well, wait, what's wrong with sponsorships? Even though you know, if you have even though if you have a certain amount of class consciousness and a certain amount of, of skepticism of capitalism, you know, sponsorships are, are bad. Um, what's so bad about, but I will ask the questions for this. I'm, I'm, I'm role playing, sweetie. Are you proud of me? I'm so proud of you. What's so bad about sponsorships? Under capitalism, the article says, every pursuit has its price. Every pleasure, even one as elemental as the joy of racing others around a track, is reduced to an advertising opportunity. Thus, the so-called tourney becomes a competition between increasingly meaningless brand signifiers. Your discount laundry detergent racing against a pack of Astra cigarettes, or even a fritter. Right, but then you get to see them crash. And that precisely is what's problematic about it. Were it not for the promise of random, spectacular violence, audiences would quickly lose interest. At the end of the day, it's the destruction of these 750,000 real races that you're really watching for. Wow, you're right. I really am just in it for the violence. You see, one cannot avoid the conclusion that Tip Top Tourney is simply the apotheosis of spectacular entertainment under capitalism. Kim, did you know Tip Top Tourney is actually an orgiastic ritual of capitalistic destruction? I had no idea. I can safely say the thought had never crossed my mind, Detective. <laughs> the lieutenant furrows his brow. I really love the idea of Kim just like standing here watching you read this and like quietly in his head being like, come on, come on. Please don't ask me anything. Let's just move on. And then you I say something, else. you say something and he has to be like, yes, very good. Can we please? I wonder what else is really just a metaphor for life under capitalism. I'm sure most things are if the young men who wrote this article are to be believed. If I had to wager, I'd say they've never even seen the inside of a motor, much less a motor race. I take whatever they write with a large grain of salt. No, Kim! We gotta, we gotta, help, we gotta help you, Kim. You flip back to the front of the magazine. The table of contents unfolds before you. I want. Is this okay? I'm not. I'm not being boring by reading a communist magazine during during the let's play. Am I? I mean, it is game content. I Listen, you're you're on, you're driving here. You set the pace. I want to catch up on international development. This section includes a long, tedious critique 
of the latest round of free trade negotiations between the EPIS nations and the Free State of Seminine. You also skip over an article about heavy fuel oil smuggling along the Mes Messina border, something about bear wrestling in Samara, book riots in Yugograd. Face it, you really aren't interested in foreign affairs. You're not even sure where most of these countries are. You flip back to the front of the magazine. The table of contents unfolds before you. We'll see what they mean by local concerns. Unsurprisingly, much of this section is taken up with articles declaring unqualified support for the dock workers' strike. You skim the headlines. Paint the harbor red and white. Martinez tames the wild pines. A city in revolt. First we take Martinez, then we take La Delta. Finally, there's a brief article by the writer, G. Martin, accusing the owner of the Cape Side Apartments of illegally attempting to evict certain communist tenants simply for not having paid their rent. Okay, yes. and then you, yes. are, you are laid on a set of choices here that definitely have some underlying political content. Charging rent just to live somewhere is pretty outrageous. The writer G. Martin remarks dryly that capitalists love wealth redistribution so long as it's only redistributed upward. Oh, snap! <laughs> okay, all right. You flip back to the front of the magazine. The table of contents unfolds before you. I yeah, love you, by the way. I'm going to go back to the arts and culture okay. section. Um... It takes a moment. But as you leaf through this section, the main feature, though, is a long essay titled Tip Top Tourne, A Critical Mazovian Perspective. Yeah, I'm going to read the profile of CS. This so-called artist spotlight is really just a brief Q&A, made all the briefer by the subject's evident hostility to her interviewer. I reckon, oh. that's, I reckon that's Cindy, yeah. Okay. Sounds dull. It, it doesn't, but I don't have enough. Okay. I, I like hostile interviews, yeah. actually. I know They're you They're a do. lot of fun. You flip back to the front of the magazine. The All right. No, I, I want to get, get out. There we go. Let's look at this. Someone left the coffee machine on. The dark liquid in the pot looks almost sentient. That's okay. Hey, you know what's pretty good? What? Pray. Yeah, a postcard what? worth 34 cents. Now I'm gonna look at the postcard. This laminated postcard offers a glimpse across the river. A little more than a decade after the war, the Eastern Bank is already fully renovated. The hillsides are lush with gardens and residences. Someone's parked a small beige airship by the fountain. This postcard will sell for a pretty penny. Okay. An imposing combination of a punch clock and a payphone is looking down at you from the wall. A note on the side says, Tokens unavailable due to strike. Use change. Okay, I'm not going to use this. I'm saving up. Yeah. <laughs> The radio is emitting strange buzzing sounds. <laughs> Collecting rainwater. Did you um, perhaps not notice? Did I miss something? I, yeah, I think it might be a good idea for you. When you step into a new area, just, like, tap that interactables button. Oh. Because there's a huge, yeah, there's a huge coat hanging there. Like that you... Someone left his tarpaulin cloak hanging on the railing here. There is a white rectangle clearly visible on its back. This is your cloak. You can feel it. Lieutenant, I point to the cloak. I think that's mine. Yes. It does bear the RCM insignia, and we are the only detectives in Martinez. 
Do you think I should get it? The service cloak is issued to you by your station? Yes, yes I do. <laughs> Sweetie, I don't think by the end of this game I'm gonna be able to get Kim to go on a date with my policeman. I, I do <laughs> think he seems pretty tired of you. As your fingers touch the tarpaulin, it almost feels like the cloak wants to deliver a message of comfort through your fingertips. See, here's the thing, though. Mm -hmm. um, the way he... That's usually the way people react to me. So I, I just assume that means they like me. I will shield you from the elements and give my life for yours. That's what the cloak is relaying. Okay. Well... It's a bit dramatic. Alright, let's... Now this shirt gives me physical instrument, and this one increases my conceptualization. Yeah. It looks a little better too. Let's yeah, be this honest. is this is not a horrible look. The giant yellow gloves are a little silly, but uh can I reach that from here or is, um, is it gonna take me out of the No, okay. At least three packs worth of cigarette butts. Numerous empty bottles of Commodore Red and Potent Pilsner. This is the Night Watchman's booth. The name on the door reads, Rene Arnaud. Listen, it's okay to take a few minutes to yourself. Sit down and have a breather. <laughs> Your volition's not very high. <laughs> this is where Rene works. I'm gonna look around, search the booth. If you must. But please hurry. We are pretty easy to spot up here. Nothing incriminating catches your eye. The cabinets are clean and their sparse contents meticulously organized. There's a framed photograph on the table. Take the picture. Does that mean I'm just... I want to look at it. I don't take the picture. It's a black and white photo of a young couple out in a street fair. The man, Rene, is dressed in a Royal Carabiné uniform. The girl is young and very pretty. She is smiling playfully at the camera. Why did you take that picture of Rene? <laughs> I'm going to ask him about it. You're really interested in that old soldier. Not sure I understand your fascination, but sure. As long as it doesn't take up a whole lot of time. Okay. I'm gonna leave. I feel like you really betrayed your artistic instincts there. Yeah. Yeah. In what way? By not making a photo collage. This is the night watchman's booth. Okay. Wait, so where? Where am I supposed to go? Oh, there's a... Okay. Well, there is a staircase. Yeah, I didn't see that before. White pine trees are printed onto the screen covering. Looks like a forest under snow. Dad's girls are consoling him. Hey, cool. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. You see faded industrial lettering, lettering on the platform. Kvalsund. Maybe? 
The shipyard ahead is oddly quiet. The great machines are sleeping. A pile of cargo belts used for heavy lifting. One says Vermilion. Hey, that's familiar. Yeah. The speaker tower is silent. There is no work to organize in the yard below. I can't pick that up, though. That's, um... Well, no, it's a great big cargo belt. That would be onerous to carry, for sure. Industrial-sized thermos. Smells like burnt coffee. The banner sags under the weight of rain and snow. White waves on red. And this guy's just singing the word container over and over. Container, container, I'll turn you nice and red. Container, container, put the logos on. What a pleasant thing. That's not the singing voice I would have anticipated for that face. So the very sweet. The lyrics to this container song are being made up as he goes along. Good Thank call. you, conceptualization. The accent is so thick, it's impossible not to notice he's Ubi from the vanishing peninsula of Ubisunt on Moindi. The... Yes. The thick is, is, is interesting. The error in original is interesting here. Yeah, I agree. Container, container, used to be well pines. Container, container, now belongs to Everard. The tiny man is so engaged in his work, he doesn't notice you. Oh. You don't need to interrupt this guy. He's having a great time. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna say hi. Okay. Everard, 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 he looks after everyone. Huh? Well, hey there. How can I help you, mister? I see you are not a union man, mister. Did you get lost? You're not one of them scabs, are you? A shadow passes over his kind face. Okay, well, I'm not going to say the second one. That's a good way to get murdered. Uh, but the first... Was it with you people and scabs? This is not... The... Why do I not just identify myself as a police officer is what I would do here. I mean, I don't personally mind. Folks is just folks, you know. And folks gotta eat. He doesn't seem to be waiting for you to answer. Just some of the other guys don't look too kindly on the scabbing kind, if you know what I mean, mister. <sighs> yeah. Um, what are you doing with the containers? Oh, I'm just making some covers for them containers here. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So it's easier for the crane operators to spot them. He waves at the containers towering behind him. Hmm. Well, this is not a great check for me, but I'm going to try it anyway. What's going on here? Everything is so pretty and red. You and Leo look like brothers as you glance around with similar childlike wonder. <laughs> I will keep the amazement to myself. The old man whistles and hums a jaunty tune to himself. What's in that container over there? Point the container suspended from the crane arm. Oh, that one. That should be empty as far as I know. Lots of containers here have nothing in them. They're just waiting to be loaded up. I'm looking for the leader of the dock workers union. Oh, you want Mr. Everard then? He's an awfully nice fellow, he is. Him and his brother are both nice fellows. They've lived their entire lives in this here neighborhood. He coughs, then continues immediately. Guys like Mr. Ever and Mr. Edgar, his brother, are real good guys. Made marginalized what it is today. Mr. Ever and Mr. Edgar and I went to the same school we did when we were boys. Easy now, Leo. I just want to know where I can find this man. Oh, Mr. Ever is where he always is. In his office, of course. He points to the two joint containers on your right. Okay, I'm off. Bye-bye now. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. Uh, we're just about at the hour, and okay. your conversation with Ever Everard might be yeah. a thing. It might take a second. So I think what I'm going to do here is go ahead and jump over to the credits and say that's going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Amabel? Yeah. First of all, I just want to say this is a delight. I'm having so much fun doing this with you. 
Oh, thank you, sweetheart. I'm having fun doing it with you, too. Secondly, I want to say, I'm so happy. I'm so happy that we put Measurehead in his place. I do not condone police violence, but I do condone anti-racist violence. And I think and that you can sometimes separate the man from the cop as we did in that moment. And then we the, also the, separated that other man from a bunch of his blood. Yeah, and the, the 360 spin kick helped. Yeah. All right, well, that's going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. When you come back next time, we're going to have some words with Mr. Everard. And we'll see you then.